Legend has it that the cause of all the mayhem at one of the most disturbing haunted houses in America stems from a little girl who was the victim of a botched medical procedure during a house call at the turn of the century. A family who lived in the Sally House in the 1990s documented their experience on the TV show Sightings, which talked of flying objects, unexplained voices, frequent apparitions, scratches, burns, and all mainly directed towards the male homeowner. Former renters of the home said their daughter would speak to Sally, and they thought it was just an imaginary friend. But apparently, Sally isn't some harmless ghost. Theories around her malevolent presence in the house, as well as some of the evidence of satanic rituals in the basement, suggest that Sally is in fact a demon disguised as a young girl. Sally was a young girl who died at the operating table in this house. The last memories being of a man she believed was torturing her. Sally is said to exact her revenge on men who entered this home. I'm with Kyla. Hi. We are here at the Sally house and we're going to be here all night long. Wow. I'm going to go upstairs. It's starting to get darker out. I want to show you guys some of the rooms real quick. This first room that I'm going into is Sally's room. And it definitely gives me a weird vibe. I want to show you some of it. Look at all of the little toys and dolls they have. Of course, they have a Raggedy Ann doll. Over here, they have some stuffed animals. And then down over here, they have yet some more toys. So I think it'll be cool to use these as trigger objects later in the night. I was saying earlier, I'm like, wouldn't that be awesome if all of a sudden in the middle of the night you heard this music box turn on? They say this is one of the rooms that has the most activity. If we go across the hall into this other room over here, this room, they say that this rocking chair sometimes will rock on its own. This other room here, I don't know why, but this one kind of gives me the creeps too. But then they have this closet in here. And I don't know, it just gives me a weird vibe. Sally, are you here? We're here to talk to you tonight. We'd really like it if you showed yourself to us tonight. If you could talk to us maybe. Give us any sign that you're here tonight. We would really appreciate it. Next, I'm going into the basement, and this is, I don't know, it's really creepy down here. It's kind of spooky. We're gonna go down here, though, whether I like it or not. Look at that hole. Oh my goodness, this is so creepy. Yes. I'm going back upstairs right now because I just had the weirdest experience and I caught it on my live stream while on Instagram. I was coming out of this bedroom here and when I came out I turned off this light and then I walked out into this hallway and I was talking in my live stream and this light here went out by itself. The other light here stayed on but this one went out and at first I thought okay well maybe it was just the light bulb like blue or whatever. I, I got a little freaked out. So I went downstairs, I grabbed Amanda. We came into Sally's room here and we were playing with the blocks on the floor. We got up, we walked out of this room and we walked out, the light was back on. It just turned back on by itself. It was so weird. And I caught it on my Instagram live. I just took a screen recording of it. So I'm gonna play it for you now so that you guys can see it. You know, it's just so cool to be at this location. Did you see it? Did a light just go out? 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 So 
spooky being in here, especially with the lightning. Do you hear that? So creepy being in here with it storming. Kind of just sitting in here all by herself. It's so creepy in here. Isn't it? Yeah. Like how Amanda like ran into this room. <laughs> yeah. It feels cooler in this room than the rest of the room. Yeah. I wonder why. I know. <gasps> that other room that we were just in. Jeez, he scared me. I'm so jumpy. Mark, did you get scared? Um, I freaked myself out a little bit because <laughs> I pushed the button on the flashlight and didn't realize it was gonna start like strobing. Oh. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I clicked it off. <laughs> It's not supposed to strobe. It gets dimmer. <laughs> Were you recording it? Yes. Are really? you fucking serious? Yeah. It strobed? It just gets, it goes one dimmer and then goes off. Upstairs. In what they right call here. Sally room though. That's a different story. Oh fuck me, come on. Push the button, god damn it. It is not supposed to do that. And like right when you start talking yeah, about how up happens. there is a on. different story. Dimmer. Off. Yeah. I mean, All I don't even think button. you could get your finger to go fast enough to make that no, happen. No, no. It, it doesn't yeah. do that. No. no. What is that? Children cow cube. I literally, it I said put it. Children. It sounded like it said children behind you. It That's did what say children. And it freaked me out. It I said that children. Was and that's funny because. You were walking past the baby doll as you. Oh, I was. Yep. I'm like shining that. Okay. How do you video? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> I was sitting with the ball in the middle of the room, and I was trying to get Sally to move it. And when I left the room, it was still there in that same spot. When we just came back, now the ball's over in the corner. All right, let's do a spirit box session. Sally, let us know that you're here. Say hello to us. Are you really a little girl? It's not like it's a no. Did you hear that? Are you the person that scratched the other people that lived in this house? Whatever it is that's up here works better when you're like upstairs completely by yourself. Mm -hmm. But I felt so weird when I was sitting in here alone. Like I couldn't even think to like say anything. Okay, Amanda and I are in Sally's room. We are going to set up the laser grid. I'll turn all the lights off. I'll face the camera towards the laser grid and we can see if we can get anything to move through the laser. And then we can also listen for any EVPs at the same time. Whatever entity is in this house, we are here to communicate with you tonight. Please let us know that you're here. Can you walk in front of this laser grid and show yourself to us? I truly don't feel anything in here. I don't either. Okay, I'm going to turn all the lights completely off. Did that just get brighter? Yes, it did. Did Sally, did you just make that brighter? The scary, like the creepy thing is, is it's almost like it waits for a challenge. Like when you were like, I really don't feel anything in yeah. here. And no, then it did like, it. Yeah. Is your name really Sally? Are there any spirits in the room with us right now? No. Is that somebody moving that? No. Nope. Barely even touching with my fingers. Oh. My I, fingers are like. Oh my god, I've never had to do that before. I'm not doing that. My fingers are like. I kinda wanna pull my hand away. I'm not doing that. Holy shit. Like, I'm literally not even touching the thing. Look at my fingers, they're like hovering. Mark, I'm not even kidding. <sighs> I'm like in <gasps> shock right now. Could, 
could totally be unrelated, but the obelisk gave the name Gale twice. Gale? Yeah. Oh my god, it did. Just to show you guys that it said Gale. Can you use are you able to focus on that map? Were you just yawning? Mm -hmm. Oh. Did you just hear that like high pitch? I did that. Ooh. Oh, you did that? Oh. No, I heard it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I heard. what I heard too. No, oh, that was after my yawning. I just heard it right the second. Yeah, I heard it too. Me too. I Thought you. Here. Sally, we're in your bedroom right now. Do you want to come in and play with us? Do you think you can play this game with us? That was my stomach. <laughs> it's so sad. It sounds like a balloon to Yeah. I don't know if the camera caught it up, but it went like all around you and it went up. It just like. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that gave me goosebumps. Did you just see me like look at it? Like, yeah, my eyes. I saw it too. We are leaving for the night. It was really, really cool. I can't wait to go back and like go through all the footage and review everything and see if we caught anything. I know. I got so much audio on my digital recorder, so I'm really excited to see. Her husband developed a gun that was said to have won the West, the famous Winchester rifle. But after Sarah lost her husband and daughter, the widowed Sarah Winchester consulted a spiritualist who alleged the family was being haunted by ghosts. They recommended that she move West and use her $20 million inheritance to continuously build a home to trick the spirits that followed the family. Built between 1884 and 1922, and now known as the Winchester Mystery House. A sprawling 160-room mansion with highly irregular architecture that leads touring guests through a maze of confusion. I am so excited. Today I am touring someplace I've wanted to visit for the longest time. There's a little bit of mystery surrounding this place, a little bit of legend, a little bit of architecture. Where am I? The Winchester Mystery House. This exquisite Queen Anne style Victorian home, located in San Jose, California, was built by Sarah Winchester after her husband's death in 1881. That left Sarah an heir to the Winchester fortune, made from the famous Winchester repeating rifle. Legend says a spiritualist warned Sarah that all the souls claimed by the rifle would come back to haunt her. In order to appease the spirits and obtain eternal life, Sarah became obsessed with keeping the house growing. She constructed hallways, rooms, stairs, doors, and many more odd and curious additions to her home. Her mania was such that it said she had workers build 24 hours a day, seven days a week for nearly 38 years. So was this the work of a woman driven mad by otherworldly entities? We may never know but the Winchester Mystery House holds true to its name. It's an absolute mystery and one you must explore. On my visit, the tour manager, Janin Boehm, gave me a private tour looking at everything in the house, from the architecture, hand-cut stained glass windows and custom woodwork, to all its switchback hallways, staircases to nowhere, and more. 
The house gives you an eerie feeling, especially in some of its formerly occupied spaces. I'm here in Sarah Winchester's bedroom. This is the bedroom that she was in towards the end of her life, and it's just one of the rooms you'll see here on the tour of the Winchester Mystery House. I even got to see many of the rooms that, for whatever reason, Sarah never had finished, and it's easy to see just how beautiful they were going to be. The Winchester Mystery House offers daily tours of the mansion and a grand estate tour where you can explore the entire estate from the stables to the basement with its original coal-burning furnace. It's said that the basement is where you can also find one of the mansion's more active spirits, known as the Wheelbarrow Man. But one of the highlights of this excursion was seeing some of the home's more mysterious spaces. And now, with the Explore More tour, you can see the deepest, darkest secrets of the Winchester Mystery House. The Explore More tour will debut in 2017 and will take you to areas never open to the public before. And there's plenty you haven't seen. The house boasts 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 47 fireplaces, 40 staircases, 13 bathrooms, and nine kitchens. The Explore More Tour is the ultimate way to explore the Winchester Mystery House. There's no denying that the mansion has Victorian elegance and charm. From its pristine gardens to its amazing roof line, you really feel like you've stepped back in time. The Grand Ballroom is my favorite. It's just incredible. And it even has its own secrets. Okay, here's a fun hidden little detail in the Grand Ballroom. Oh, a safe. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> that is a lot of security for something, maybe jewelry. But when they opened up the safe, three, four doors, they found that it was just her husband and her young daughter's obituary and a lock of her baby daughter's hair. Something that was the most important to her. The Winchester Mystery House is incredible to tour during the day, but have you ever wondered what this place must look like at night? Well now, this October, for 10 nights, you'll have the opportunity to find out with the Halloween Candlelight Tour. It's just you and your tour guide and one candelabra, and you'll be able to walk all over this house. Do you believe in ghosts? You might after the tour. The Halloween Candlelight Tour is a perfect addition to your autumn festivities. With all its intrigue and labyrinth-like interior, the Winchester Mansion is the perfect haunting grounds for a nighttime tour. After all, it was named one of the top 10 haunted places by Time Magazine. A haunted house toured only by candlelight? Bring on the spirits. I wonder if they'll let me use the seance room. The Winchester Mystery House does not disappoint. I'm so glad I finally got to explore it, and I know you'll want to return again and again too. And thanks to their new Skeleton Key Club, you can. From unlimited visits to exclusive access to the Explore More Tour and discounts on food and merchandise, this is one annual pass you don't want to miss. Plus, you'll be the first to hear about special events and social gatherings at the house. I've already gotten my membership, so be sure to get yours now. There is so much to see here at the Winchester Mystery House. You could easily spend a half day touring all of the crazy rooms and the fun little oddities that were built into the property. I highly recommend the Explore More Tour. There's so much behind the scenes rooms that aren't even finished yet that you'll get to see. Um, and I know that they're doing a lot of seasonal options, whether it's Halloween or Christmas, but I'm definitely coming back for. I hope you enjoyed this look and that it's going to inspire you to come and include this on your vacation to the West Coast. As for me, I'm moving in. I'll be right here. On June 10, 1912, Josiah and Sarah Moore, their four children and two visiting guests, were hacked to death inside this quiet Iowa home. The crime remains unsolved, and much of the home is still intact from that fateful night. 
With no running water or electricity, visitors are able to stay inside this home overnight, but only at their own risk. In 2014, a paranormal investigator who booked a room here wound up stabbing himself to death by morning. So we made it to the Villisca murder house in Iowa. So there were murders in 1912. Parents, friends, young children murdered. So they pretty much restored the house to the way it used to be. And as you see here, it's a National Register of Historic Places. And there is no electricity in here. So, I am spending the night in this lovely place with no electricity. Uh, the shot that you see outside that red barn, that'll be where my bathroom, bathroom's gonna be. There's the Holy Cross and uh, some holy stuff to help me not get murdered or possessed tonight. Feels kind of creepy in here, but you know, make our way upstairs. Room was occupied by JB Moore, age 43, and Mrs. JP Moore, age 39. This is where they were sleeping. And here is the attic area. And they say this is the area where the killer was hiding. This actually has a little Amityville horror effect with the, uh, the windows here. But yeah, this is where they said the killer was hiding overnight to come out with the axe and murder everybody in the bedrooms. And here's the photo of who's in here. Boyd Moore, age seven. Paul Moore, age five. Herman Moore, age 11. Katha Moore, age 10. All four children, unfortunately, murdered by the axe in this bedroom that you see right here. And there's dolls, so this is getting really creepy. Get really creepy really early. <laughs> we haven't even started the night, has sunset hasn't even set yet. So pretty much that was your basic tour of the Velisca Axe Murder House. Cold case, never solved. Just gonna go hang in the barn for a little bit and charge up charge up my stuff so I got it for later on. Probably get a bite to eat, come back here, and then uh, get ready for the night, man. See if any paranormal stuff happens. Ooh. Here are some pictures, I guess, of people that stayed here and happened to see some things, which looks creepy, like those uh, marks on people. Showing some, some uh, you know, figures in the background from when people take pictures. That's creepy. Now I'm like, shit, why didn't I have somebody with me here? <laughs> but no, I, sh I should be good. I should be good. They've had a run-in with some people come in late night, knock on doors and windows, trying to scare the crap out of overnighters. So, fingers crossed. But hey, man, I've heard worse from other places I stayed at outside, so I'm not too worried. All right, I'm in the house, it's dark. I have my lantern. And I'm just kind of touring the house, pitch black with a lantern. 
I'm getting chills and my eyes are getting teary. This is this is just weird. <laughs> like I just feel like I'm not even lying. I'm not joking. I just just feel it's like there's something. Maybe it's just mind playing tricks on me because it's me here and it's dark and it's quiet. But I definitely have goosebumps. My hair is standing up. Um, I'm getting chills and I mean I'm going through and there's just chilly spots like super chilly spots and then there's hot spots and I'm all the way up on top where there should be hot spots and I'm getting chills and shit so it's pretty crazy so I just took a bunch of snapshots I showed you all this stuff earlier today this is the kids room where they got murdered going through here this is this oh my god oh my god look, look just look I don't know if you can see my skin but I'm getting goosebumps in this area and this area is right in here that is where they pretty much said the the person came out of and came into the rooms with the axe he must have hid in the attic right there said he could have been a drifter maybe a local not 100 percent sure but um yeah so here we go here's the other bed up here uh, just kind of going around, just taking a look at everything. Um, it's pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. Pay attention as I go down these old crinkety crinkety stairs. Truthfully, if the people haunting here were the ones that are murdered, they're a good family. It's not like they t insane asylum, they tortured people in here. It was just a horrible tragedy that happened to this family and friends. I don't know why when you look at the way old photos were like I mean like old photos people pretty creepy in there. I I don't know maybe it's just like the old photo thing like I don't know at least I try to smile and have a little bit of fun or you know if I want to look creepy I just go Whoa. like that. All right well, there's my little little night tour just gonna kind of hang out here for a little while, see if anything happens. I not 100% if I'm gonna sleep on the floor in here, because that's pretty much how it is. Yeah, the beds are obviously antique and they're old, so we're not sleeping on that. We have to sleep on the floor. Um, I don't know. I'm just getting a bad vibe, a little bit, just super creepy. So maybe I stay in here, maybe I don't. I don't know, or maybe I just stay up all night. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, to be continued. All right, so we are outside in the dark. Uh, just kind of wanted to give you an idea of actually without any lanterns or lights how dark it really is out here. So you can kind of see the street lights here. But uh, other than that, man, it is pitch black. That's the barnyard I was in before charging my stuff. Yeah, this is a, a cellar down here. This is like padlocked can't break in there this is backdrop of the house going out to the front get a little more lights here from the street lights so that's as good as super chilly out here definitely parts of this house I am definitely feeling that eerie feel to it um, like I said everything I want to pretty much say I'm not gonna do anything fake for the camera there's this isn't one of those stupid haunted houses that you go through for cheap thrills and scares this is me coming in here with an open mind and just trying to see what I could find and what I feel. And uh, that's one of the things I'm feeling right now. Also, I, I, once again, this could just be because it's super quiet in here and when you're kind of in a solitary type of space, uh, you definitely feel certain things and, and your mind and your senses become a little more heightened. So I definitely heard sounds. Um, I have went up and down, there's pretty much no visual evidence of anything, but like I would, I heard something like steps. Uh, once again, it could be the creaks of an old house. Um, and I thought I heard like a ball rolling, like as you saw in the videos, certain rooms have balls in them. Um, I, once again, I didn't see anything. Um, these are just me just sitting in different areas and just hearing things. So, so far, like I said, we're about an hour in, and this is what I'm experiencing so far. Uh, no visual sights, um, just gut feelings and, and some sounds that I heard. 
Um, I'm kind of going to show you where I'm going to be sleeping tonight. Definitely it's nothing fancy. Just a little cloth and a pillow. But uh, I just want to get a little bit of sleep before I start my journey back to Omaha tomorrow. So I'm here laying on the floor right now. Um, yeah, just still hearing those weird sounds. Um, walking around, like asking questions to see if anything will happen. Like ring a bell, roll a ball. Uh, is there anybody in here? And I'm not getting any responses or anything of that nature. But I'm still hearing these weird sounds. Um, I felt something kind of feel like it brushed up against my arm and leg, which is pretty creepy. I really don't know if I'm gonna be sleeping tonight. <laughs> this is uh, some weird stuff. I've never really felt this at unease before. I've seen tons of horror movies. I've slept like that, but being in a place where you know something tragic happened and it's being this quiet is pretty spooky. I'm not gonna lie. Oh man, like my hairs, my hairs are standing up. My goosebumps is, it's freaking crazy, man. I'm sorry. I'm like, I don't know if you can tell. My eyes right now are like super watery. I am like just tearing up. I just, I'm not, I'm not even acting. I'm not even lying. I'm just. I just feel like more chills. I feel like ah, just like sadness just just coming over me right now, uh, getting really, really emotional. Um, I don't know. I just really don't feel comfortable right now. I don't. I don't know what it is. It, um, I. I think I'm not gonna stay. I'm not. I'm not even lying. I'm like right now. My body's fucking. My body's fucking shaking. My eyes are tearing. Um, I just feel really at unease. Uh, just really uneasy right now. Um, I, I think I'm. I'm just. <sighs> I think I'm going to just get like a motel or something, and and just spend the night there and then continue on. I'll probably just find something in Omaha and just drive the hour and some change and just be able to wake up over there and then go to my Airbnb. Because right now this is not a good feeling. Um, like I said, I don't feel threatened, but I do not feel comfortable. I really, really don't feel comfortable right now. And uh, 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 yeah, I, I'm, Just gonna get my stuff together and I'm going to get out of here. The TV series American Horror Story reignited interest in this famous French Quarter haunt. In the series, Kathy Bates plays the insane killer who orchestrated a torture chamber for slaves at the Royal Street Mansion. She resided there from 1831 until 1834, when responders to a fire uncovered her dark secret. Her victims are said to haunt the property to this day, and passers-by say they can hear shouts, moans, and weeping. And some say they have seen ghostly faces from the upstairs windows. Yet the house's ghastly history hasn't stopped numerous wealthy buyers. This is not the address of where we are standing in front of right now, but I do find it interesting that it's right next to it, upside down, 1134 as hell. And there she is, the home of America's first female serial killer, Delphine Lalaurie. All right, before we get into the gruesome details, I do want to point out that actor Nicolas Cage once owned this house. He knew what this house was and he still bought it. I'd probably buy it. All right, Jessica, 
tell us what you know about this house. Okay, so we all know that she was a madam, a socialite, and she kept up with appearances. She even had, uh, I believe, two daughters, two full-grown daughters when she lived in this house. And from the outside, it's just a beautiful estate, just like any other down here. On the inside, it was her very own secret torture chamber. The slaves were afraid to speak to anybody for fear that they would be next. And torture chamber is really the proper word for it because she delighted in her own experiments of breaking bones repeatedly after they had peeled and set, she'd break them again. Peeled and set, she'd break them again. Um, and kept them that way in, in cages, tight cages, while they healed and then broke them. Um, she performed her own version of lobotomies. She uh, would break open skulls while her slaves were alive and then take a hot poker and stir their brains while they were alive. Uh, it's very grotesque, it's very sick. I get chills being here knowing what happened in this house. On the outside, so beautiful, and on the inside, a very gruesome tale indeed. Typically, I bet this place doesn't look like this, but because it is Halloween, they do have it all decked out with some creepy, creepy Halloween decorations. Not really sure what's going on here in this scene, but you know what? It's pretty fitting, I say. That chandelier right there? It says chop shop. Oh man, this house has so much history. Scary history. Right? Twisted, twisted history. We were here last night and we looked back here. This door that goes into the back courtyard, you can actually look up and see a lot of the building. You really can't see from the front. Let's go back here and check that out. It's a beautiful home. It's crazy. It's something so horrendous happened in such a place that was so beautiful. Now to be fair, I have no idea what this place looked like when Delphine La Larie, it's fun to say that, lived here. It might have looked like hellhole, but from what I understand, I mean, she was high class here in New Orleans. So it's probably a really nice mansion like it is today. With bodies in the floor. So that is one detail though um, that they portray differently in American Horror Story is that um, they did bodies on the wall in the television show, but in real life, she apparently had them buried in the floorboards and all over the floorboards, multiple floors. Now the tale of how they were caught is actually quite interesting as well. You see, they were throwing a party like they typically do. And one night, something in the kitchen caught fire. There are so many different stories about this place. The one that I heard is during that party, the fire grew so intensely when everybody came out to the street that we're standing in right now, the fire marshals came, went inside to do some investigating, and they found a room that was locked. They couldn't get inside it. Well, it was customary because of the, the way the family was. They yelled out to ask the gentleman if he had a key for the room, and he said no, he didn't. So they busted it down, and inside, that's when they found the very first victim. By the time everybody was discovered, Madame LaLaurie and her husband and her daughters disappeared. They'd never been caught. I do want to point out that whenever the murders did happen, this house didn't have a third floor. Well, at the very least, not this third floor. It looked completely different and it is believed to have burned down during that fire that night. So I debated sharing some of the gruesome details and uh, as I'm looking up just other facts about her, like her marriage, but I wasn't sure, uh, Michael said that my face, that I should just share it. So if you don't want to hear this, please stop watching right now. But like I could vomit right now, guys. This is so horrifying. Um, some of the people when they were found by the firemen at the time, uh, one woman was found in her own intestines. Uh, mostly I think these were women. They were found with excrement, human or animal, which is poop, uh, in their mouths and their mouths were sewn shut. Um, situations like the human centipede kind of thing they found people in. Uh, one woman who was in a small cage, her bones had been broken and re mended and rebroken so many times that she resembled a crab, a human crab. Uh, 
out. Their eyes were gouged out, their tongues were missing, their intestines and their organs were missing, their skin was peeled and they were hanging on hooks. All of this horrificness happened right here in the French Quarter in New Orleans on Royal Street. So much history here, not all of it is good. Absolutely crazy. Regardless of what the story is, the story, the legend of Delphine LaLaurie here in New Orleans, people tell it and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. The Riddle House is one of the most active haunted houses in Southern Florida. Death has surrounded the Riddle House since it was built in the early 1900s. First used as a funeral parlor and later as a private residence. During the reassembling of the Riddle House, the workers would find their tools thrown all around the home. Third floor windows would also be found mysteriously broken. At one point, Reconstruction had to stop for six months because the workers were so frightened by what they experienced inside. More recently, a visitor who scheduled a tour was struck in the head by a piece of wood in the staircase. A maintenance worker was attacked while cleaning the building and refuses to enter the house again. Other witnesses have spotted a hanging torso in the attic window. Security personnel have seen lights going on and off in the building, and many avoid going inside the house at all costs. We are in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I am super excited to be bringing this video to you. Right behind me is one of the most haunted houses in all of Florida. It's called the Riddle House. Now you may have seen this on Ghost Adventures, on a bunch of other paranormal shows, but the Riddle House, I've been here once before, but never got to film all alone. Luckily today, my friend Chelsea and I, we're going to be able to go inside, film all by ourselves. So there's this doll over here, which is extremely creepy. Look at that base, like, is that creepy or what? Okay guys, so we're with Scotty from War Party Paranormal and she's nice enough to let us come here into the Riddle House, show us around, tell us a little history. The Riddle House was actually moved here. Mm -hmm. But the history is uh, that one of the one of the guys who worked here, Joseph, mm -hmm. he hung himself in the attic. Hung himself in the but attic. There's up also here? Wow. there's also been some deaths in the house. I mean, you know, it's an old house. Yeah. People and children didn't live long back then. So, but I mean, I'm not I'm not a history expert. Right. I'm yeah. Yeah. You're a paranormal. I'm yeah. Good at it. I go on Facebook. Scotty Burns, Facebook. Awesome. And you look me up on my face, my, I'm public, War Party Paranormal. We are in the Riddle House. I'm gonna start upstairs, okay? Okay. So we're gonna go straight upstairs, guys. I'm gonna let Chelsea do the downstairs first. Now there is a lot of history and hauntings of the Riddle House. It was actually moved um, from a lot of locations about 20 minutes from here. And, um, there's been some serious hauntings. One of the people that used to live in this house went into the attic and actually hung himself. Now, <laughs> that's pretty freaky if you ask me. I don't think we're gonna be able to get into the access to attic today, but we're gonna check out this house. I'm so excited, guys, you have no idea. Keep your eyes open, because this place is extremely haunted. Anything is possible here. You never know what you may see. Look at that doll, it is freaking creepy. It almost looks like his freaking eyes open. Is there any spirits here connected with this doll? Make his eyes blink? Is there anything you can do to show us that you're here? Anybody, any spirits at all, let us know. Okay, so let's check out the rest of this place. See what else is around here. Is that a bedpan? It looks like a bedpan I just kicked. Wow. This is some kind of crazy, guys. Now, I'm not exactly sure where the attic is even at. Oh, my 
what's in there. Or maybe that is the attic for all I know. I'm not sure. Let me flash my light in here really quick. No, that's just the closet. Okay. What is that? I'm not sure what that is. The Palm Beach Post. Oh, from 1975. Get some of this stuff, guys. Wow, this is crazy. Whoa, did you actually, you know what? I heard a pop and it was like a delayed reaction. I thought it was me, but now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think that was me. <gasps> I heard something. I heard something and look, I just seen the freaking curtains move. I don't know if I caught that on camera, but I heard, I heard something and then I seen that curtain right there move, it swayed. I swear, this curtain right over here, guys, I seen it move. All right, guys, so let's go on to the next room. So they have volunteers here that work, you know, throughout the community because there's a lot of, you know, places in here. And um, yeah, super excited that they're allowing us inside here by ourselves. Um, I guess somebody came now maybe to keep an eye on us, which I don't blame them. This place is pretty historic. But, um, oh, wow, look at this. dresses so this obviously was a woman's room and uh i get a really interesting vibe while i'm in here actually guys like it's really strange it's not a bad vibe but it's a vibe of like man it's so weird it's almost like i feel like somebody's here with me right now like in this room right now if there is a spirit right here with me right now, is there any kind of sign you can give us? Anything you can make move? Any noise? Anything? I don't know, guys. What do you, what do you guys think of this place? I think it's pretty freaking cool. What the hell? What the hell is that? I heard something. I don't know what it was. It sounded like a tap. <gasps> there, I just heard another tap right there. Did you hear that? That's two taps I heard. That's so freaking weird. 100% guys, I heard a tap. This place is so freaking cool. So I have to find out what the name of this room was because obviously, you know, some woman stayed here in this room, but, um, yeah, I get a really interesting vibe in here. I don't know. I don't know. It's so weird. Especially like this dress right here. Oh, I didn't even notice the freaking mannequin head there. Like, what the heck? What kind of dresses do you think those are? What the hell? No freaking way. What the hell? Oh my God. Thing just freaking open. I knew there's something in here. I knew it. I knew it. I gotta tell Chelsea about this. I don't want to like yell because I there's a volunteer downstairs with Chelsea right now. And I actually want to investigate this by myself, but oh my god, that thing literally just moved. I swear it did. I heard it move. I saw it move. I mean, it could just be like no, there's no way that could just happen by itself. What the heck? That is crazy. That is so wild. Okay, I think we're gonna go to another room, guys. Wow, what the heck? This is neat. Okay. I don't know if you can see these pictures too good. I wanna get into the attic. Wow, now this is creepy. There's something really creepy about this room. It's, you know, as much as that last room just felt like nice and peaceful, this room feels creepy. I don't know why. Maybe this is like below where the, the guy hung himself. Wow. Definitely don't want to touch anything in here or do anything in there, but that is freaking crazy. Oh, this must be the attic right here. Of course it is, and they have a lock in there. That's nuts. I'd love to get in there if I had the opportunity to. 
All right, let's see. So I checked out, was it that room or this room? No, I checked out the room. I had not been in this room yet. Oh, wow, so this is where the baby's room. The baby's, the infants. I hope that just picked up on my camera. Was that a... I could have swore I just heard like a baby noise. It's a really freaking neat. All right, so let's keep going. I guess we've seen pretty much the entire upstairs. And um, that's pretty much it. All right, I guess we'll go downstairs. <gasps> oh, what the heck? Chelsea, yeah. I could have swore I just heard like a knock in the attic. <laughs> I could have swore I just heard like a like a knock in the attic, like, like a loud knock. Maybe it's just the building settling or something, but that was really spooky. I've heard a little boy fell out of the front top stairs <gasps> and killed himself. I Which so. stairs, like, hmm. like upstairs out of the kids' room up there. But. So I came downstairs and Chelsea went upstairs. Shout out to Brenda, she's one of the volunteers here. She's been so helpful telling me more about this place. She was telling me that Mr. Riddle actually built this himself and both sides were built from like a baby's crib or something, which is really neat. It's like a, I don't even know what's in there. Maybe some cool silver. I don't know what this stuff is. What is this stuff? So I guess this is another way out, which that's really neat. I wonder if that's original or if that was probably built for, uh, you know, handy.